guys, my name is Amanda. Welcome to my channel. I'm so happy to have you here today. If you are new to my channel and you like what you see, please don't forget to subscribe. If you do subscribe, hit that bell button so you're notified every single time that I upload. Also, giving me a big thumbs up really helps me out here on YouTube. Thank you so much. Let's jump right into the DIYs today. Next couple of DIYs are inspired DIYs, and I'm giving all my credit to Sammy over at Unicorn Desk Designs. She is amazing and so inspiring, and her projects that inspired me are pictured in the left corner of your screen. Now I'm going to take the two fabrics that I am showing you, a Pioneer Woman fabric from Walmart and a Buffalo Check pattern from an old tablecloth. I'm also showing you two frames from Dollar Tree, some moss from Dollar Tree, it comes in a sheet form, and some wood bunnies as well as wood planks. Now I'm going to prepare my Dollar Tree frames by removing the insert and using that insert as a base. I'm going to hot glue on my fabrics. I'm going to do one with either fabric. I'm just going to put a line of hot glue around the edge, pull the fabric tightly so it's not bunchy, and push it down onto the hot glue. I will then trim off the excess. This is how I chose to do it, but if you would rather chase around this base and then cut out and attach that's totally up to you this just works well for me and here are my bases for my projects now i'm going to take four of these wood planks from dollar tree they do come six to a pack and if you cannot find them walmart sells similar ones i'm going to stain them with antique wax by rubbing it on and then off i'm going to glue two of these wood panels on each of my prepared bases I'm going to make sure that they attach snugly to each other so there's no gaps or spaces and just use generous amounts of hot glue. This holds them on very well. Once that's done, I'm going to take one of these bunnies and the moss sheet from Dollar Tree and I am going to go ahead and glue my bunny down onto a piece of that moss sheet and then trim around it with some detail scissors. If it's easier for you to trace onto the moss sheet, cut it out and then glue it on. Again, that is totally up to you, but for me, it worked out really well to just use my little detailing scissors. Any pieces of the moss sheet that fell off, I just reattached them in any of the bare spots on top of my bunny. So I have a cute moss covered bunny that I can attach to this project. Originally, I was going to place two bunnies on this project, but decided to just add one. So I'll have an extra bunny for another project. So I'm going to use hot glue to attach my bunny right down on top of those two planks. I just try and get him right in the middle and then just do any trimming that is necessary. And that's how easy it was. I did decide to add a little bow, so I grabbed a piece of jute twine and just tied a shoelace bow that I can attach to where the neck is. I do apologize for my voice. I am battling strep throat right now, so please give me grace. I then attach the backing back into the frame carefully, making sure that I attach each one of those little prongs that hold everything into place. And here is my first project. Now for my second project, I'm going to take a wooden carrot cut out from Dollar Tree that comes several to a pack and I'm going to attach some of that beautiful Pioneer Woman fabric on top of it using hot glue and then trimming off the excess but again as I've been saying in this video there's several different ways to do this just do what you're comfortable with but this worked well for me I make sure all the excess is removed and then I'm going to be taking some boxwood greenery very inexpensive from Walmart I'm going to be cutting it down into small little pieces and glue gluing them on top of this carrot. Once that is done, I'm going to go around the top of my carrot with some jute twine several times until I am satisfied. Once I like how it looks, I will just cut off the jute twine and secure the end down with some hot glue. Here's what that looks like, and I'm going to take my other prepared sign and attach that carrot at an angle right on top of those wood planks. I'm also going to add another jute twine bow, and here is my adorable little set. I did decide to go around those panels with some jute twine as well just to frame it out and I added another bow but that is just my customization it is totally up to you how you want to do yours and 
I'm honestly not sure if customization is actually a word, but it is now. It might be the night quilt talking. So again, please give me grace. But y'all know what I mean, and this turned out absolutely adorable. Next, I'm going to take a minute to talk about the sponsor for this video. A company called Hippie Crafter reached out to me. I checked out their website as I like to do before I agree to collaborate. And when I checked out their website, I was very impressed by what I saw. So I decided to collaborate with them. And I am absolutely thrilled with the products I received. You'll be seeing that here in a minute. But I am just on this page so that you can see all of the amazing items that they offer. I am never sure of the quality when I just look at a website. So I love getting things in person that I can physically see and give my opinion on. So here is just what I found on their page that explains what their website is about and what they stand for. It is so nice. I love to support family businesses. So this package came in the mail for me. I was so excited. I went ahead and opened it up, removed all of the nice packaging that they had in there. Here is what the heat gun looks like, along with a fabric paint set that they sent me with 24 different colors and 48 colors of polymer clay. I was thrilled by the packaging. It was beautiful and bright and colorful, and I just loved it. I was also thrilled by how everything was displayed inside of the packaging. So here's all the polymer clay, and my son is really good with clay. So he decided to just show you how easy it was. It comes with these amazing tools that are easy to use, and he formed a mushroom, baked it in the oven according to the directions that come with the clay, and here is what that looks like. He said it was very easy to work with and in his opinion as well, it was very high quality product. Next, we decided to try out the fabric paint set. We were also really impressed by this. My son is the painter in the house, so he went ahead and tried it out for me. Everything about the paint and all of the instructions are clearly laid out on the back of this box. I was impressed by the pigmentation of all these colors, how bright and beautiful they were. My son decided to go Go ahead and paint on a t-shirt just to show you how well these paints worked and again the pigmentation on the t-shirt the design was absolutely gorgeous so he just squirted out several of these colors and he said that the bottles were really easy and pliable he was able to squeeze out the exact amount that he wanted here's the design that he painted on his t-shirt i think it is absolutely adorable he went for mushrooms because there are mushrooms on a lot of their packaging as well next for the heat gun we removed it from the package it is very lightweight and easy to use and also has two temperatures which impressed me as well and everything about the heat gun is on the back of the box again a gorgeous box that it came in we tested out the heat gun and it worked really well on both settings. One of the things that I really like about it is that it is quiet and does not have a loud obnoxious noise like some heat guns I have worked with in the past. Dried the fabric paint on this t-shirt beautifully and quickly and we were very impressed. I am so thankful to Hippie Crafter for sponsoring this video and sending me these amazing items. Here's one of the pamphlets that came in these products. And again, they just show you what else they offer. And everything is clearly and beautifully laid out. I, again, was so impressed by this packaging. It's so fun and it feels so fancy and nice to have amazing new craft supplies. Okay, let's jump right into our next idea. This DIY is also hired by Sammy over at Unicorn Desk Designs. Um, up in the left hand corner, you can see the adorable little bunnies that she made and I did the same thing. Um, well, not exactly the same thing, but it was inspired by those. I just did it on a larger scale. So I began with this bunny wreath form from Dollar Tree and two rolls of the Dollar Tree nautical rope. So I began by taking that tape off the end of the rope and then just using a tiny dab of hot glue to twist the rope together so it does not unravel. Next, I'm going to run some of this rope all along these three circles on this metal form. I'm just going to use hot glue to press the rope down. Once I come to the end of my circle, I will then cut it off and begin the next rung. 
Once I have all three rungs covered in this nautical rope, I will then go in between each rung with another strip of rope and I will just use tiny dabs of glue to adhere those pieces of rope in between the rope that is on the metal wreath form. I hope that makes sense. I got a little tongue tied there, but here you can see what I'm doing. Just putting some hot glue down in between those two pieces and then running another piece of rope in between them. So all together, I will have five rows of rope. I'm just trying to make sure that the ends meet up in the same spot each time. So all of my gluey mess will be in the same spot and I can easily cover that. So once that is completely done, I can go ahead and begin on these ears. I just love how this came out. I absolutely love the little mini ones that Sammy made and I just decided to go ahead and make a larger one. So I cut a circle out of this fabric that again was from a um, tablecloth that I purchased 90% off at Hobby Lobby but any fabric would be pretty. Dollar Tree does sell fabric so I just went ahead and glued that down onto the back of my bunny's head there just using some hot glue and kind of pulling it as tightly as possible to make sure it's not going to wrinkle up in the middle and then of course I'm going to trim off any excess fabric that may be hanging over the edge of the rope there and now I'm ready to just put a little dabs of glue there where the first layer of rope beats the fabric just to make sure that everything is going to lay nicely and nothing is going to lift up. Then I'm ready to begin on my ears. I'm just going to take a large piece of fabric and I'm going to lay it under one of the ears and then I'm going to put some hot glue all along that metal ear frame allowing it to drip down onto the fabric. Then I'm going to fold my fabric over and press it down so that everything adheres nicely and then I can go ahead and tuck the little top where it meets the rope down with some hot glue and then I'm ready to take some scissors and just trim all along this ear. So here's where I'm putting a little bit of glue and making sure that that's adhered. I flip it over and make sure the back of the fabric is also pressed down and glued down and here I'm just going to trim out the shape of my ear. So this works out really well for me and I also do this on the other ear as well. Just making sure that everything is trimmed up as close to that metal form as possible. Any extra little tiny pieces of fabric at the bottom of the ear in the back, I'm just tucking down with some hot glue. So now, of course, I'll just go ahead and do this to the other ear, and these are so cute. Now I'll take some more of that rope, and I will just run it all along the edges of my ear with some hot glue. And again, I did use two loops of this Dollar Tree rope, or two groups of it, two packages of it, however you want to say that. So this little wreath was so inexpensive and it's so gorgeous and it's actually not all that little so once I come to the end of one of my ears I will just glue that piece of rope down and repeat the process on the other ear I am then going to go ahead and put a little Dollar Tree carrot I had created one of my previous projects so I just did this one the exact same way and I glued it down on my little bunny's head at the bottom and then I'm just going to use a variety of greenery at the top underneath that ear there. I'm going to have some downward and some kind of across like so. I'm just going to glue it down until I think it looks really pretty and it is full enough. So I'm just actually using an assortment of greenery here but Dollar Tree does sell some really pretty greenery. So once that is exactly the way I like it and I think that it looks nice I'm going to go ahead and make a little scrappy bow. I'm just going to cut some strips of both of these fabrics, the buffalo check and also the floral fabric, and then I'm just going to layer these strips in a way that I like them. Once they're all layered up, I will pinch them in the middle and tie it tightly with a little piece of jute twine. So this is just a cute little messy bow, and then once I am all done with it, I can go ahead and put it down right in the middle of those little greenery pieces to the side of my ear. So here here I am just tying this up and it looks like a hot mess right now which is why it's called a messy bow but once I get it down on my project once I get it glued down then you can go ahead and kind of 
pull those pieces of fabric out and arrange them the way that you like them and they end up looking so so cute so here i am just using a little bit of hot glue on the back of that bow positioning it where i want it and then i'm just doing that fluffing and kind of pulling and arranging that i told you that i was going to do just to get this to look exactly the way i like it and then i'm going to go ahead and take a little tiny a jute twine bow and glue that down in the middle of the bow i also glue little jute twine bows to the very top of my ears right on top of that nautical rope there and I just think this is so adorable I absolutely love it thank you so much Sammy for this idea by sharing your littler ones that are so so cute and look adorable on a tiered tray um, I really appreciate the inspiration and I'm so happy with how this large rabbit head turned out I hope you like it as much as I do so for the next one the inspiration for this is from Nicole over at the Weeks Nest. So here's your crown for that, Nicole. These were absolutely adorable. She used a white and blue fabric and they were so cute. But I wanted to go ahead and use some more of this Pioneer Women fabric. So I just kind of cut a square, folded it over to be a triangle. And I am cutting two pieces at the same time, if that makes sense. So here I am just cutting my square to make triangle so now I have four pieces I'm going to make two sets of two and make sure that the pretty side is on the inside I'm then going to kind of cut the top in a rounded fashion so it looks like this I'm going to put some hot glue on top of the pretty side and then glue these two pieces together. They look like a piece of pizza right now. Really pretty floral pizza. <laughs> and then I can go ahead and turn this inside out so it's really right side in. Now, normally I would use some polyfill or pillow stuffing for these. I couldn't find any on hand and I didn't have a pillow I was willing to sacrifice. So I just used some pieces of this Dollar Tree automotive cloth and it actually worked out really well for me. So once I get my carrot as full as I want it I'm going to gather the top and I'm going to tie it tightly with a little elastic from Dollar Tree they're like the little um, hair ties that come about a hundred to a pack and that is what I am using to gather this together at the top here is a picture of them so now I'm just taking a little piece of eucalyptus and I did use an assortment of greenery from these so I get my greenery at Walmart and also at Dollar Tree so once I get that elastic on my carrot I'm just going to put a tiny dab of glue on this eucalyptus and then just shove it right down there into the top and here is what it looks like and then you can go around that elastic with some jute twine I doubled up a two pieces and went around I tied a knot and then I tied a cute little double bow and then I just trimmed off those tails and this adorable cute little carrot is done I absolutely loved it when I saw Nicole make these and so thank you for the inspiration i am really thrilled with how they came out this next diy is a, a little fabric colored house so i began with this wooden house from dollar tree i took my waverly plaster chalk paint and gave it a nice coat then i'm going to be using this same blue color of folk art and i'm going to paint around the edges of my house i did paint the back as well because i slapped a little on there and i didn't want an unfinished look then I'm going to cut out a piece of fabric that fits the front of my house and I'm going to use some Mod Podge to adhere that down. Dollar Tree does sell small bottles of Mod Podge if you need some. So once I get my fabric positioned on top of there, I'm going to go ahead and apply another coat of Mod Podge over the top of the fabric. And then you can just trim off any excess that may be hanging around on the edges. And then there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and take some Dollar Tree jute twine and I'm going to wrap it around my house. I believe I wrapped four or five times just securing it down with hot glue and I'm using little popsicle sticks so I don't burn my fingers but Dollar Tree does sell finger protectors if you need them. Then I'm just going to add a little tiny twine bow that I created. It's a shoelace bow just like tying your shoes and then I'm, and then I'm going to pop a little piece of this boxwood on either side of my bow and that is this DIY. 
so easy and customizable if you had a pretty ribbon you could use that you could put a little flower there um i have some gorgeous pioneer woman ribbon that i purchased at walmart after christmas one year but it's christmas so i just went ahead and did this i think it's really cute and for just over a dollar it is a bargain so here's what it looks like with some of the other stuff that i that I made and I hope you like that quick and easy project. Now let's jump into another DIY which is also easy to do just a little bit more time consuming but really it is absolutely worth it in my opinion. So here's what it looks like in my kitchen area. I took five of these Dollar Tree wood planks, they come six to a pack, and two of these house shaped frames from Dollar Tree and painted them with this blue color by Folk Art. I am then going to take the inserts of the house shaped frame and I am going to cover them in fabric. This is how I chose to do that, but it is absolutely optional. Again, you could trace and cut if that is easy for you. I just went ahead and covered both sides of this frame to give it a more finished look and made sure that my fabric was pulled tightly and I glued around the edge trimming off any excess and that is what my side will look like. Of course you will want to do this twice. Once you have your sides prepared you can pop them back in the frame and secure them with the little tabs that come on the back of the frame and that way they won't move around on you and you'll be be ready to move on to the next steps of our DIY. So here is what they both look like together and now I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of the wood panels that we had painted. Again these were from Dollar Tree but you can purchase them at Walmart if you can't find them. I attach two with a couple of popsicle sticks and then I paint over those popsicle sticks and I do that three times. So I have three groups of two all attached with popsicle sticks. So one group will be our bottom and two of the groups will be our sides. So I am just placing my side exactly how I want it and making sure it lines up nice and straight. And then I am using my hot glue gun to to provide a generous amount of hot glue to secure this. I'm also going to be putting a popsicle stack down there on top of the hot glue for stability. Of course I go ahead and paint that popsicle stick real quick so everything blends together and once that is done of course I will repeat this on the opposite side for our two sides of this crate and then I will add one onto the bottom. So here I'm just adding some hot glue at the crease where everything meets and again tucking some popsicle stick down there for added stability. You'll just want to hold it for a minute until the hot glue begins to set and if you would like to use a longer term adhesive like an E6000 or a super glue that would be great as well. Once I get that all done then I'm going to go ahead and attach the other side to my crate which is the other frame with fabric in it. I'm just going to figure out exactly how I want to place it and how I want it to attach and then I'm going to add hot glue generously to the sides where I know it will attach to the sides of our crate. Again, I'll pop a couple of popsicle sticks that I painted the same color into the crate. And for the bottom, I am using hot glue and tacky glue from Dollar Tree Alternated to attach the bottom to the rest of this crate. But again, use any type of adhesive that you like. Just set your crate right on top. And then you have an adorable little crate using mostly Dollar Tree items. Of course, I wanted a handle for this. So I actually did use dowel rod from Walmart as I couldn't find any at my Dollar Tree but Dollar Tree does carry them. I just painted this dowel rod and then used hot glue on either end and wedged it down in between my sides. I then decided to go ahead and tie a bow on the handle of this crate just like you would tie a shoelace bow. It's a little more bulky using this beautiful Dollar Tree ribbon but it came out really really cute and once I get my bow formed I will then go ahead dovetail my tails to give a gorgeous boutique look. A dovetail is when you take the ribbon and fold it over on itself and then you use your scissors to cut a triangle upward. 
This, again, gives you a gorgeous boutique finish, and I like to do this with most of my bows. So I'm just arranging my bow to make sure it's lying straight and nicely and dovetailing the ends. Now to the inside of this crate, I added some brown craft paper as a filler so I would not have to use so many bundles of boxwood greenery, but it is totally optional what you put in here. You could put all kinds of different things in here. This is just how I chose to display it, but the sky is the limit with what you use this for and also the paint colors and fabric style that you use can be customized okay guys let's jump into our next idea i purchased this gather sign from dollar tree it's a thick mdf and i painted it with that same blue color from folk art that we've been using i um, just went ahead and got in as much of the cracks as i could to give this a nice finished look then I went over the whole front with a dinner's coat of Mod Podge and I laid a piece of fabric down on top of it. So this is just the way that I'm doing it. I'm sure there's plenty of ways to do it. You could trace it out onto the fabric and cut it out. But this way worked pretty well for me. I also applied a coat of Mod Podge over the top of the fabric and I allowed it to dry. I may have helped it along a tiny bit with my heat gun, but however, once it was completely dry i use my exacto knife and my detail scissors to go ahead and cut around this word and again this worked out really well for me but you can do this any way that you like i just trimmed as close to the word as possible and um like i said i use my exacto knife and my tiny little pink detail scissors sorry about my forehead doing a little peekaboo show there for you uh, but um this really did not take me long at all and i may be weird but I found it really fun and kind of therapeutic to just make sure that I got in all the little cracks and crevices so I just go ahead and do that until I am completely finished and then we have a beautiful decor piece perfect for a wreath or a shelf a little vignette I put it on the shelf in my kitchen and here is what it looks like I think it is so gorgeous and again very customizable Okay, let's jump into our last and final DIY, an oldie but a goodie. I purchased this fabric from Walmart. It is absolutely gorgeous and was very inexpensive. I can't remember the exact price, but it was very inexpensive. But Dollar Tree has fabric if you want to keep this in all Dollar Tree DIY. Now I'm going to take four of these frames that have a very high-end appearance from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to remove all of the contents so I just have the frames. Once I get the frames prepared, I'm going to paint them with this color by Folk Art. But again, paint them any color you like. I painted on two coats and went over it with a coat of Mod Podge. And now I am just going to be taking the glass that came inside of this frame and using it to cut around so I get a piece that will fit perfectly inside of each frame. So you could totally trace and cut this out with scissors too, whatever is easiest for you. I had just found this rotary cutter at Dollar Tree and wanted to give it a try. It didn't work out too too well for me because my fabric was kind of thick and doubled over but it worked out okay. Now I'm just going to go ahead and trim my fabric down to size and and then I'll be placing one piece in each of my frame. So here is how I did that. And you could totally attach the fabric to the backing if you wanted to. It actually wasn't necessary. Once I added the glass into the frame and then added the fabric, it stayed in place. So I didn't have to attach it to the backing, which is cool because then if I want to change it out for another type of fabric or even some scrapbooking paper, I can totally do so. So here's what that looks like. Times it by four and then lay out your four frames because we are going to be attaching them and making a gorgeous window so here is where I'm going over the frame with Mod Podge as I had said I did Mod Podge over the frames just to make sure that the paint did not scratch off or chip off and they maintained a high-end look so here's what they look like all glued together or all placed together ready to be glued together now I have them flipped over 
and I made sure that they were all straight and butted up against each other. I am going to be using hot glue and popsicle sticks to attach these together, but if you would rather use a longer term glue, that would work out really well too. And I am using these popsicle sticks, which kind of makes the back a little bit ugly, but Dollar Tree sells brown craft paper, which is perfect for covering the back of a project like this. You could just place it on the back and glue around the edges, and nobody would know about your popsicle mess holding all of your frames together. So here's what that looks like. Now I have a tiny little wreath form that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. Uh, they, I believe they came four to a pack after one of the holidays. I see them almost all of the holidays, but I got it very inexpensively. Then I just have some boxwood greenery. Again, I purchased that at Walmart very inexpensively, and I have some Dollar Tree flowers. So what I'm going to be doing is just stabbing as much of this greenery as I can into this little wreath, and that way I don't have to use a ton of hot glue. I think there were a couple of different pieces where I had to use a little dabs of hot glue here and there, but for the most part, I was just able to push this boxwood greenery right into this wreath form and it worked out really well the less hot glue you have to use the better because then you can reuse your projects so i just did this all the way around trying to make sure that my boxwood was facing the same direction so my entire little wreath looks uniform i make it nice and fluffy and once that is complete i am ready to add in my flowers the only flowers i really had on hand from dollar tree were these beautiful red ones but I thought that they were perfect so I cut them down and then again use that little stem to stab into my wreath form so I do not have to use a bunch of hot glue I add just a few of these flowers that I have in my stash and then this wreath is absolutely adorable and is ready to be attached to our frame now I did go ahead and add in some baby's breath I'm sorry I forgot this part but this is just a totally extra step that you don't have to take if you don't want to. I just think that the baby's breath totally made this wreath absolutely adorable. So now what we're going to do is flip our window back over after we attach a little hanger and how I did that was just reusing one of my discarded floral stems and bending it over to form a hump and then just attaching that to the popsicle stick on the back of my frame with generous amount of hot glue and then another popsicle stick on the top again I am going to cover that with brown craft paper and then I just put a command hook on the front of my window and hung my wreath right there in the middle of the window. I think that this came out absolutely adorable and I really hope that you liked it too. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I really appreciate you. Please subscribe if you haven't. Don't forget to hit that bell if you do subscribe and also please consider giving me a thumbs up. This helps me out on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. Friends, take care. I will see you soon. You can subscribe to my mom's channel and thank you for watching today's craft and stay safe.